Father God, we thank you for your word and we thank you for our gathering here this morning. And we pray that you'd be speaking to each of us as we look at your word together now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay, I'm going great, thank you. So, here we are in Advent. We have just lit our second Advent candle and Christmas is coming ever closer. We've had the Henleys Christmas Festival this week. My tree is up and I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel quite Christmassy. However, in the Christian calendar, we're still firmly in the season of Advent. Now, I grew up not really observing Advent or understanding it, really. Um, I've always got very excited about Christmas. Um, between you and me, I'm not ashamed to say that it wasn't until I was about 24 that I actually slept through the night before <laughs> Christmas. Um, I'd always wake up every few hours on Christmas Eve because I was so excited. Um, so I always thought that the season of Advent and Advent calendars were designed for people like me who just needed the time to go faster. But in reality... Advent is a time of waiting, waiting in hope. It's actually about the waiting, not rushing through to the main event. And really, a 25-day countdown is not a long time, especially compared with how long the people of God waited for the birth of Jesus. In our passage today, Mark quotes prophecies from the Old Testament, reminding us that the coming of Jesus in the Christmas story was the fulfillment of God's promises made centuries before. God's promise to come and be with his people on earth takes place in Jesus. And that's why Advent is used as a time for us to contemplate and prepare our hearts and minds to experience God. It reflects the centuries of God's people waiting in hope for the Messiah, their saviour, to come. And John the Baptist is trying to help people get ready for this promise fulfilled, for the coming of Jesus. But those he's speaking to are in that space of waiting. Whereas I guess now for us in 2023, we know that Jesus did come, is with us now by his spirit, and we hold on to the promise that he'll come again. We live in the hope of his coming and bringing to completion his work of restoration and redemption for the whole world. The season of Advent recognizes that the story started, but it's not finished yet. But we do know where it's headed, so we can have hope. I got married in the summer, um, and I think of the first Sunday of Advent a bit like a save the date. And then this week, John gives us the invitation. He invites us to prepare, because one more powerful than he, Jesus, is coming. So, how might we hear Jesus's uh, and John's invitation today? Got just a few thoughts that came to me as I was reading this passage. So John invites the crowds to repent. For me personally, the call to repent is always as fresh as ever, as I continue to stumble and get things wrong. I feel John's invitation to reflect with the help of God's spirit on those things in my life that affect my relationship with God, with others, and with myself. And we do this each week as we gather together. And each week we're reminded of God's goodness towards us and his presence with us. I felt challenged just this week. I went to an event as part of my placement with a chaplaincy department. And the people at the event, as they spoke, I was just struck by their sheer passion and giving of their lives to advocate for the safety and lives of others. I came away feeling quite inspired, but also aware of my own apathy at times. How might God's spirit be speaking to each of us this Advent? I think we're also invited to take note and look for God at work in our world and our lives. Just as we're called to prepare, we see so clearly in this passage God's preparation throughout all time to come and be with his people. This season, we celebrate that God has prepared a way for us to know him. It's the simple and yet incredible truth of Christmas. And I pray each Advent for a fresh revelation of that truth, of a God who fulfills his promises and longs to know us. And, praise God, he is still at work in our world and in our lives. So how do we see God at work around us and in us? 
And how can we be noticing and joining in with God at work this Advent? From this passage in Mark, we don't know a lot about John. Mark focuses on his appearance and what he eats, so that he's clothed in camel's hair and eats locusts. Some think this is is to help the reader associate John with other prophets in the Bible, like Elijah, and so to hear his words as prophecy. But as I read it, I wondered too whether it helps to remind us that God can speak through everyone and anyone. It opens up our ideas of who and where we might see God speak. And how can we be open to seeing and hearing God in the places we least expect this Advent? I was also struck by the opening line, this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. This is a story of good news, good news for all people in all places at all times. And John knows this, it makes it his life's work and his life's mission to live in the good news and point others to it. This morning we have the privilege of witnessing the baptism of Dylan and welcoming him and his family into the family of God. A family who are called to know and live in light of this good news. In a world so desperate for good news, how is this Christmas story good news to us, to our families, our communities, our world this Advent? Finally, as we read about this time of waiting for Jesus, I wonder whether we or people we know might too be in a space of waiting. For me, there have been periods of time where I've felt I'm waiting for something to change, waiting and longing for God to meet me in whatever circumstance I'm in. I can't imagine I'm the only one, so what are you waiting for? And beyond these walls, there are those who are waiting for the end to war, the end to violence and suffering and waiting for justice, crying out for something to change. And in all of that, we need the hope that God is a God who meets us in our waiting and fulfills his promises. How can we, this Advent, in our waiting, pray and stand with others in their waiting? Amen.